over at the investment property and today we are going to be killing all of this front lawn in between the retaining wall and I've got some Roundup here. I don't really have enough for the four gallons of water that I have in my sprayer, but I think it will work. This will get a head start on just clearing these weeds out of the rock wall and getting this all killed. There isn't really enough of any kind of grass in here that I want to save. So I'm just going to get this all sprayed today. Let it start to, let the Roundup start working on it. And then all these right here, there's my four gallon sprayer really nice. I wish they had not discontinued these things from uh, Cobalt. That's the house brand for Lowe's. A really good backpack sprayer. Got a fan tip sprayer. Uh, I'm not really using the proper PPE that I should, but I'll be careful with it to keep it off my feet. And then I'll wash my hands and shoes and everything when I'm done. But basically you're just going to be killing these lawns here with Roundup weed and grass killer. Um, there's selective herbicides and then there's something like Roundup, which is glyphosate, which is the active ingredient and anything essentially that's green that it touches, it will kill it down to the root system. And I think it's about after five or six days, the plant fully metabolizes it out and it's not really dangerous. Obviously Roundup gets a bad reputation and you gotta be careful where you spray it, but it, I don't think it's as dangerous as some people make it out to be as long as you handle it properly. So I don't have enough for the proper concentration, but I'm gonna put this bottles about I think I need 24 ounces for this properly, but it's probably about half full. So I will dump it in there. And I have something called a surfactant too that I'm gonna to put in, which helps it grab onto the uh, onto the plant better. And after this, I'm gonna Google and see if surfactant works well with regular glyphosate. So pouring my Roundup into here. And then I'm gonna throw this bottle away in the hazardous waste when I go to the dump in Placer County tomorrow. And I'll be back in a minute to see if surfactant is recommended for this. I looked it up and a non-ionic surfactant is recommended for glyphosate when you are spraying. So I'm gonna put some of this in here. What it does, some people use, uh, they use dish soap, um, but this is, I think, better than that. And what it does is it helps the, uh, the weed killer bond, you know, hold, get, it makes it sticky and it holds onto the to the leaves better. So it just less of it goes down into the dirt and gets wasted. It holds onto the leaves of the grass or the, the weed, and then it takes it into the plant better, metabolizes it, and goes down in the root system and kills it. So I'm filming this now, getting some wide shots. I'm gonna be, be careful. I'm probably just gonna hand pull this stuff because I don't want to get some spray. And one key is you do not want to spray something like Roundup on days when it is windy because then it can transfer over to other plants and kill them. And you also don't want to get it onto your feet and hands and get spray. So it's also recommended I'm going to go get a mask. Um, haven't been wearing COVID masks much anymore, but it's not a bad idea to put one on so you're not breathing in fine particulates when they, when the, uh, Roundup gets sprayed. So we have a filter here. Dump out this stuff that's in here. Drop this down in. Screw the lid on here. I'm gonna put the backpack on and kind of do a little hula dance to shake it up so it stirs it up better. I think technically you're supposed to put in quarter of it then put your stuff in and then fill it up more so it mixes better but I've never had it not work so all right I'll be gonna go get my mask and then get spraying here I've got my sprayer ready I'm turning on the power and I'm gonna start building up some pressure in here and just gonna take I don't really know where our property line starts so I'm just gonna assume it's this rock wall here so I'm gonna go backwards that way I'm not stepping over where I'm spraying and it's going to get some spray pressure built up here. Not working very well yet. There we go. For some reason, pressure on this is terrible. Oh, there it goes, building up. And hit everything that's green, overlap it just a little bit. And anything that doesn't get killed, I can still go back and hand pull, but this is going to 
give us a head start and we'll come back in a couple days and report back and see how it's doing. It essentially starts killing right away, but it takes a while for you to actually see it. And then what I'll do is I'll bring out a little Sun Joe, um, I don't call it a rototiller, like a scarifier and dethatcher that I can do, come through here and help dig all this stuff up too. And I'll put some fertilizer and some better uh, soil down, maybe a mix with compost. here. I'm sure the neighbors won't mind me hitting this. I'm overlap a little bit as I walk backwards. Let's get that bad boy. Got a really nice Japanese maple right there that I probably shouldn't have sprayed next to. I didn't torch that, but it's a pretty robust tree. So from the back, try not to waste sides. It's getting into all the green spots. You can actually use Roundup on Bermuda, they say, when it's dormant. And it won't necessarily kill it because it's just it's not dead, it's asleep. All right, so we've gotten this section done. And this, I'm gonna get all these edges here. I'm gonna be taking these out, so I don't really care about the lavender per se, but all right, let's go back over here. Just work in a straight line. Mostly dirt right there, so not necessarily matter. And like I said, anything that I miss, I'm not that worried about because I can come back and I'm gonna dig this all up anyway. But this will prevent, make it less likely that these weeds will grow back. So I wish I had a fan tip on this. I have a kind of a wide dispersion one, so it's spraying more in a big circle than a straight line. I find the straight line works better. I can feel where it's going. And I would add a blue dye to this, except this is not my sprayer. I borrowed this from my brother and sister-in-law, Mike and Celeste, which you guys probably know if you know our family. New YouTubers won't know Mike and Celeste, but I'm sure you'll meet them in future episodes. I'm also not too worried about the plants that are over here because I think this whole top of the retaining wall is going to come out. All that vegetation that's there, so. I'm going to be pulling these, this lavender out. I kind of don't even know how many square feet this is. I'd say each one is probably 200 square feet. It's one of these sections. I'm going to be careful with this tree over here. side of the caution bed, Japanese maple. Good thing it's not windy today. Even if my concentration's not high enough, um, I'm pulling all this stuff out anyway, so I don't think I'm gonna, like I'm gonna build up roundup resistance into these plants, they're just gonna get pulled out and anything that grows back in whatever lawn I grow, I'll just hand pull. Spraying this stuff is actually kind of a laborious process because you have to wait for it to die and then break down in the ground and pulling, just grounding it all up and pulling it sometimes is better because then it's just out of there versus having to wait for it. And down to my last little section here. Get this those cracks. I have no idea if I'm even keeping this centered on the camera very well, but it's kind of over 
overlapping now. And it's done. I can feel the sprayer getting light, so I'm getting close out of it. Just a little extra here. And this stuff work, definitely works better when it's warm. If it's, you don't want to do it when it's just about to rain because then it'll run off. And if it's too cold, the plant really isn't growing, so it's just kind of stunted. And it has to be growing for it to effectively take this stuff up into the root system and kill it. So, got that done. Now I'm just going to look around the property for any other little spots that need. You see how wide this this fan tip spray is? It's kind of a waste of the stuff. I'll have these weeds over here. Again, this stuff could be easily pulled, but I want to just test it and see how effective the weed killer is too. One more spot here, and I'm gonna sign off. 